Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and I have been making some videos lately on sites that I have made videos about before, but I have a lot more subscribers these days, and some of these sites are very important, and people should be reminded of them again, or maybe hear about them for the first time, and I know some of these sites, people are hearing about them for the first time, and that's why I like making videos about some of these places. And also, I like making videos about places that are very, very ancient and very, very important. And I also like making videos about places that I can end it with kind of a message. And this is one of those videos today. And the site we are going to talk about is called Karahan Tepe. And you may say, well, that sounds like Gobekli Tepe. Well, it's the sister site of Gobekli Tepe. And... We are going to cruise in here on Google Earth, and this is just a very non-distinct hill on a farmer's land, and this is all it looks like on Google Earth. If I back up here, there is, I guess, the farmer's land that you have to talk to if you want to go up here and investigate this, but very few people have. Very few people have. And this is just lost history at its finest here. But I did a video about a year and a half ago on Karahan Tepe and some other ruins in the area. And this is an area that I featured in a lot of my videos. And I find it fascinating. And it's very ancient. And there are untold stories yet to be told. But I included a couple websites on this video that I did a year and a half ago. And uh, one of them is Andrew Collins' website. And I thought this was excellent. And I will leave the link to this below. But since I featured this in my last video on Karahan Tepe, I'm really not going to read from this today, but I'm going to make you aware of it. And Ancient Origins also has a story on Karahan Tepe that I featured in that video. And I will leave the link for this below. And also, I know some of you are familiar with this video from Megalithomania UK. The 10,500-year-old Karahan Tepe, Gobekli Tepe sister site. And this is Hugh Newman and Andrew Collins. And I thought this was an excellent video. I'm glad these guys went and checked out this place. But this is very, very ancient. And not a lot has been written on it. So I wondered what I could share that would be new. And I remember Graham Hancock had a little bit in his uh, book on Karahan Tepe. So instead of reading from these one of these websites here that I've already used, I think I'm just going to read from Graham, Graham Hancock's book, Magicians of the Gods. And I will just here put back on Google Earth. And this is all this place is today. A nondescript hill in southern Turkey. And I am just going to read. Now this is from a chapter called The Hill of Pillars. It's baking hot in southeastern Turkey in July. Our driver speaks English, so there's no problem communicating with him, and he in turn can communicate with others on our behalf. But nobody we pass, as we drive through a landscape of irrigated fields and barren hills, seems to have the faintest idea where Karahan Tepe is. Well, why should they, after all? It's just an, another hill, and by all accounts, it's in a fairly deserted spot. We do find it in the end, however, about 15 kilometers south of the main E90 highway and 65 kilometers or about 40 miles east of San Lerfa. That's where we spot a little farmstead surrounded by low walls and poor fields at the end of a bumpy dirt track. The farmer points to a hill rising a few hundred meters to our north. It's on his land, he says, but we're welcome to take a look. He assigns his teenage son to show us how to drive our car as close as possible to the site. Then we step out and go the rest of the way on foot. The tepe is a ridge of limestone running roughly north to south with steep slopes covered in loosely crumbled soil overgrown with yellow grass on its eastern and western flanks. The top of the ridge is about 705 meters above sea level, but the climb from where we have parked is only another 50 meters, and almost immediately we start seeing the characteristic T-shapes of the pillars we're familiar with from Gobekli Tepe. They are everywhere around the sides of the ridge, dozens of them, some organized in circles, others in what appear to be parallel rows, but all of them are quite deeply buried with only the distinctive tops of the T protruding above the ground. 
Extraordinarily, other than confirming that Carahan Tepe is the same age as Gobekli Tepe, i.e. between 11 and 12,000 years old, and that it was abandoned at around the same time, around 10,200 years ago, after which it was never resettled, almost no archaeology has been done on this site at all. Local people, on the other hand, have been busy here looking for treasure, and their efforts have exposed a broken number of pillars with two serpents carved on them exactly in the same manner that serpents are depicted on the pillars at Gobekli Tepe. And it says, As at Gobekli Tepe, it is clear that the quarrying of the pillars was done on site, and we find a number of places where parallel grooves marking out the shape of the pillar have been cut into the bedrock of the ridge. There is almost... Excuse me, let me start again. There is one almost complete T-shaped pillar still situated in the quarry that measures 4.5 meters or 14 feet 10 inches high, 1.5 meters or 5 feet wide, and 80 centimeters or 2 feet 7 inches thick. Looking from that to the forest of the pillars, with only their heads protruding above the flanks of the hill, I can't help but wonder what would be found here if a proper excavation was done. Gobekli Tepe has already rewritten the history of mankind, and here is another Gobekli Tepe, pristine, practically untouched, and no one seems in the least bit interested. Indeed, there is even a broken L-shaped fragment of a carefully cut block that once formed a complete square or window or portal. Similar pieces have been found intact at Gobekli Tepe that have been used here as part of the hearth for some shepherd's fire, and now sits blackened with smoke in a sheltered corner near the top of the ridge. It's incomprehensible to me that a place as important as Carahan Tepe, with so much to teach us, could be ignored and so disregarded. I have often said, as I did at the end of the last chapter, that we are a species with amnesia. I attribute our great forget forgetfulness of our own past, the blank pages in our memory, to the terrible cataclysms the earth passed through at the end of the Ice Age. But here at Carahan Tepe I'm reminded of that our collective stupor is also often willful, willfully self-inflicted, as though we no longer care to know where we come from, or who we really are. Well, this is Karahan Tepe, pretty much an unexcavated, very ancient site. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.